Hey everybody, one of the GMG review. Today we're taking a look at something different. These are three of the new, uh, I guess, fully articulated um, range of Warmer 40,000. And one of these is the gold label uh, action figures from McFarland Toys. Uh, big shout out to my friend Claudio at McFarland Toys. Uh, he actually was with Workshop when I was with Workshop at a point and was one of my customers forever in the Eaton Center store in Toronto, uh, making his dreams come true and working for this action figure company. Uh, I'm hoping to get him on Inside Tabletop at one point too, but uh, McFarland Toys reached out and wanted me to check out some of these new offerings. We have a Blood Angels Reaver, a Chaos Space Marines Iron Warrior, and an Imgarl Gene Stealer, which means the Zoidberg Gene Stealer. So I get to do something different today, and this is possibly the most jealous cash has ever been of my job was when I was like, when this box of action figures showed up on the on the front step and he was like, can we open them? And I was like, I, we can't buddy, I gotta make a video. And it's been killing him slowly waiting for me to do this. So we're gonna check these out today. Um, if you told me 15, well, 10 years ago when I worked for Workshop or 15 years ago while I was at Workshop that this was going to be part of my job in the future, I'd have called you a liar. But these are mass market available toys. Um, you can get them at any outlet you can get McFarland toys from. So typically your uh, comic book shops, um, any toy vendors at cons and or uh, a lot of department stores. I've seen these for sale at Toys R Us, which still exists in Canada and Australia, I believe, too, uh, although it's gone in the States, um, and Walmart, too. So I, the, they've seen these things everywhere. Seeing Warhammer stuff around uh, has kind of blown my mind. I want to build the Gene Stealer first because I'm actually the most excited about it. So we're going to crack this sucker open. Oh, I knew I should have brought my pocket knife. That's okay. I'm going to get this guy out of the box. And Cash will no longer lose his mind knowing that these are unplayed with. He has several of these already. I have the um, the Primaris Blood Angel Lieutenant, uh, all of the Dark Tide miniature, or uh, yeah, miniatures uh, toys I have too. So adding these to his collection has been on his mind. So really well packed. Um, and there's, I guess, it looks like there's some assembly required for the Gene Stealer, but that makes sense because he is massively articulated and also like huge. Oh, I love his Zoidberg head. Look at that thing. It's So it looks like the paint jobs on these are colored plastic, followed by some oil washing, um, and then like the details uh, picked out in actual like paint and stuff too. So we've got one, two, three colors, a wash, and then the eyes done. And for a factory paint job, man, that ain't bad. I'm just gonna hum these off into the distance. <laughs> uh, and then put them together. There's a base. I think I just threw the base away by accident though. So it looks like the top arms, go in and we've got rending claw arms. Now the one thing that's a bit strange is the rending claws are kind of small compared to the ones that are the, um, like the actual like workshop ones uh, for the miniatures, but oh man, I might have to go get the base because I don't think he's gonna stand up for this. It doesn't really matter because he's gonna seem like this. But then you can alternate and give him the rending, the scything talons too. So these just pop off. It's a little gun to me actually. And the articulation is firm, but it's not like, you can see I didn't, it didn't kill me taking these off. A lot of, we have a lot of the Gundam Infinity models in my house, mostly because at the dollar store once they were five bucks. Uh, I think they're like 35 bucks normally. They were five bucks and they all come with like a piece of a Zaku. And if you collect it all, then you can build the Zaku when you're all said and done. So that meant I had to go to every dollar store in like my local region to try and find the rest of it for cash so he could build the Zaku. Um, the articulation on those is really, really tight. Like he has a hard time getting the legs on and off. These are actually way easier. But yeah, no. So the one thing I will notice is the carapace stops getting painted down here. So I don't know if that's a factory design or something, but like it's fully painted to the top, but then they've kind of just stopped here um, and not finished the paint job. I don't know if it's like that on all of them or this is maybe a mispick, but that's... That's one thing I'm gonna notice right away. Other than that, man, it's gross looking. It's very crazy, like that I'm holding a jeans stealer <laughs> in this scale. Um, but the articulation's fantastic. Like the toes are articulated. You can pose them a lot. He he kind of almost, if you stood him up, he kind of almost has, um, uh, what is it? Um, the necromorphs from Dead Space kind of a feel to him. But it maybe it's just because the scale is slightly different, right? Like the sides are a little bit smaller and the rending claws are a little bit smaller too. It seems different to me, but you could even move these down. I'm pretty sure these come off. No, it's only the top hands looks like they come off. I'm not gonna try and force it. All right, well, let's get number one. Pretty happy with him. He's appropriately gross, except for the one bit of carapace not being painted. That's all good. Um, and he's got a cool card that comes with him. Uh, so this is the, I guess these are the collector's cards. Imgrawl Gene Stealers are renowned for the frosty and close combat, armed with diamond hard claws and inhumanly fast ref reffle X's. 
<laughs> That's two words. Um, telepathy between broods allows them to function even outside the range of the hive mind. They're an insidious force that seeks to spread its existence to other planets, mutating ignorant populations uh, whenever they're or wherever they're found. By the time the innocent realize their fate, it's often too late. So I don't know if they mutate them. That's not quite what happens, but I mean, you're explaining this probably to a kid or a collector. Who doesn't know? Now, it's interesting that, um, well, it's interesting that these exist, first of all, but it's interesting that they have the collector's cards in them to kind of like educate people on what they are. This is definitely like a promotional thing for Workshop. Like obviously it's good business to have a license deal like this. And this is the gold label, so I assume the painting on this one's gonna be slightly higher. This is the Chaos Space Marine. I'm not gonna lose the base this time. Throw it out of here. Um, oh, oh, he smells. He smells like wash. He has like a, it's not gasoline-y, but it's like, there's some kind of an oil-based wash on him. I can literally, it's very strong. I could smell it when I opened it. And there's a bit of a, so you can see the difference. So this is obviously where the spray is. At the back here, they haven't washed this in the backpack. You can see how it's shinier around where the plug goes in. And the rest of it's actually been oil washed. Whatever that oil wash is, it smells quite strongly. Almost like baby powdery, like a, like a sharp, weird baby powder. And that fits in nicely. The one we got um, cash that was the Lieutenant, stuff kind of wasn't, it didn't fit quite as well. The backpack fell off quite a bit. I think he's gonna stay up on his own. Minus the base, although the base is in here. Come on, base. No, I'll pop it out. There it is. Comes the bullet gun. You get, you get a variety of equipment. Maybe that's what the level up is, the gold suit. You get extra equipment for an Iron Warrior. These are like taped in. He's got his, I feel like this is the most Iron Weapon, Warrior weapon, the big, that's it. The big club. <laughs> he's got like a big old club. Uh, the hands are all articulated. So the right hand is articulated to have like the trigger finger. So you can put this in. And then the left hand is articulated, or not articulated, well, it's articulated enough that you can get the, the close count weapons in. But that's cool because the, the trigger finger actually kind of holds the gun. Oh, I like the double mag. That's cool, although they didn't paint the, um, they didn't paint the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the straps there, the, the stuff that's holding it on. But the double mag's kind of cool. Um, and is it elbow articulated? It is elbow articulated, so you can have him like holding it down the barrel and kind of looking. And they fit, like it's funny, the detail on, so we've got the oil wash on the silver, which is probably the base spray, or the, the actually the colored plastic looks like it's actually like a, a dark gray. We've got a bronze, a bit of like orange on the studs here, orange on these studs, red on the eyes, and they've done a pretty good job. That looks like it's been hand painted actually, if you wanna look at the, the edge of this. It's pretty straight. I think it's been masked. Yeah, it looks like it's been masked and painted. So that's not bad. And they've actually done the yellow over the black, it looks like, because you can see how it ends there and the black is underneath. I think they've done that separately. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Like, I think that painting's pretty decent for a factory paint job again. I don't know if it's gold seal, but it's pretty good. Uh, and then the close count weapons obviously go into the other hand. And we'll see how articulated it is. Come on, thumb. I would always break the thumbs off my GI Joe's trying to get him to hold things. So I'm always nervous about this. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> He's the ironiest warrior. Can I make him run? Oh, I can't. Oh my God, look at that extend. His leg like super extends. So I can have him doing like the, the flying jump kick. Whoa, look at that. He's like, he's, he's Michael Jordaning somebody in the head. Just doing like a flying like. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> that ain't bad. I think that's pretty cool. The articulation actually really surprised me because like the leg extends a little bit for the knee to pop out. Give him the big boot. Give him the big boot. He's giving him that big boot. Hogan style when Hogan couldn't wrestle anymore and so you do that instead. So what's the, the, the background of this guy? Originally of the fourth Space Marine Legion, the Iron Warriors fell to the ruinous powers during the Horus Heresy 10 millennia ago. Fighting an endless war against the Imperium, they were renowned for feared to specialists of attrition and siege warfare. They advanced like a grinding war machine, metal and munitions marching towards forward beneath the icon of the Iron Skull. One that strikes fear into the most stalwart defenders. Copyright Games Workshop 2024. Ooh, that's the Storm of Iron cover, I'm pretty sure. That ain't bad. There's Hanzu, if you know what Storm of Iron is. That's a, a very good old Graham McNeil book. I do like the collector's cards, they're a nice touch. Let's have this guy, let's have them wrestle. There we go. And just, uh, yeah. oh, come on, get in there. Get in there, Cast Space Marine. Yeah, got some, some wrestling happening while this happens. And then it's just the Blood Angel. This was the one that looking at them, obviously I was the, I was kind of the least impressed with, just cause the paint job looked really flat. Like these ones both had washes on them. Oh my God, I can't get this to come off. But I'm gonna check out whoa, this last guy. Goodbye box. Goodbye box. 
So I don't know what the difference between the gold seal and the not gold seal is at this point, because they seem kind of the same. <laughs> like this guy doesn't have the gold seal, but his weapons are painted to pretty much the same standard. I guess there isn't a wash on these ones. Although I guess that could just be that that's what makes them chaos, is they're dirty versus not chaos. Oh, his face is painted really well, actually. Better than I thought it was from looking at it from just inside the box. I haven't opened any of these yet. Obviously, I, I had to keep them safe, otherwise they were going to disappear into captain's room. I'd never see them again. And he's a Blood Angel Reaver Sergeant. Oh, wait, his base out. Uh, once again, the stencil work on that's pretty good. I think it's black. I oh, don't know, it might be black second actually over the yellow. It would make more sense, but there's like streaking of black underneath these. The stencil work's pretty good. Yeah, I think the difference between gold seal and not gold seal is washes. Cause like this has been dry brush, this metallic, which is funny cause if they dry brush this metallic, it probably would have looked better. <laughs> cause there's his Batman gun. The where does he get the, all the wonderful toys gun, which is my favorite gun in this whole thing. I do like the grapple launchers. They're, they're very cool. So he's gonna do his bat launcher and then yeah, this does not have the extended finger. So he has his um, his bolt carbine with like the front grip. And then I'm, that's plausible from the other guy. And he's got his combat blade. Oh, and you can stow the combat blade. Oh, that's a nice touch. I really like that. Is there anything like that on the Chaos Space Marine? No, there isn't. That's a cool touch that the belt actually lets you stow it. And yeah, I can't put both these on him though, unfortunately, but I could give him, and he's got a pistol too. So really I can only give him the knife. I could probably give him the pistol in this hand. And it'd be cool if the pistol stowed as well, if there was like a loop for it. But yeah, there's no, there's no pistol stowage and this backpack just slides on too. And is it nice and grippy? It is, yeah, it's not coming out on its own. That's very cool. So there's the, there's the Reaver Sergeant. I will say the face is nice. The eyes are actually, holy crap, they have pupils. That almost looks like a transfer in there. The eyes are crazy detailed. I'm gonna take a picture of them separately so you guys can see how, how detailed the eyes are, because I'll overlay the picture, because like, you can see there's an actual like, set of these. I'm gonna take individual pictures of all of these actually, just so you guys can see what they look like, because the detail on them is pretty nice. Like you can see the battle damage on the shoulder pad there. Same with like the oil marking on these, you're not looking from a million miles away. The oil marking on Zoidberg here looks pretty great. And then same with uh, Mr. Chaos. But I, I'm not super sure what the difference between gold seal and not gold seal is, if I'm honest. You can see there, those, the unpainted sort of like straps and stuff. And you can see what I'm talking about with this tail, where the, the purple just kind of stops. So there it is, some McFarland toys. I was impressed with these for the first ones I got for cash uh, for his birthday, so I already thought they were pretty great. Um, I also have a couple from the painter series, the artist series that are unpainted that I'm gonna ch like show you guys and check out, but I wanted to show the painted ones first because obviously this is the main product offer for people that don't know what this stuff is. And for kids, my son is gonna be wicked excited to have this Reaver to go with his already um, sort of like Marine, his, uh, his Lieutenant rather. The articulation on the Marine's really good. Like the shoulders actually articulate outside of the, the shoulder pads. You can see here they wiggle around. So there's a lot of posability on this guy. Um, he can also do like full head turns. He, his legs also extend so he can do like crazy super kicks. Right, he can be like repelling down, doing like a Batman repel. All kinds of like weird, crazy poses this guy could be in. Um, which for a model, for a space marine in general, like think about that. Think about the fact that like he could just be like suplexing this guy. Like, oh, there you go. Give him the, give him the shoots in the face. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of posability on these that I wasn't expecting for something like a, this is actually very cool. I'm gonna, this pose actually looks really good. I'm gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> There's a lot of like posability on these I wasn't expecting from the point of view of this being like a large, you know, 10 inch toy. Um, so there it is, yeah. McFarlane toys. I, I've owned a bunch of these without ever reviewing them, so it's cool to actually get to like break these down and look at them kind of objectively. They're, they don't break the bank. Actually, I think GameStop even has these in their action figure section. Um, and they're a good like entry point from the point of view of they have like a little card, like the Reaver Sergeant, the Blood Angels, Noble Space Marines are known for their ferocious red thirst and black rage psychosis. <laughs> they excel in rapid strikes, but the Reavers take it to the next level, launching brutal assaults with sudden fury and shocking violence. They serve as terror troops, sowing fear and confusion amongst their foes. Who would know this was a good guy, <laughs> right? Like these do not look like good guys. Um, but if you want to introduce like, uh, you know, an audience that isn't currently a Games Workshop customer to Warhammer 40,000, this is a pretty cool way of doing it. Yeah, the neck articulates alongside the like insert, the collar, so you can like tilt his head up and down too. The articulation of these is pretty impressive, if I'm honest. Like the, the torso isn't even one piece, the torso is like one, two, three, four, five pieces, including the shoulder pads. 
So there's a lot going on on these. Um, but yeah, they didn't break the bank when I grabbed them. I think they were like 25, 30 bucks for each one. Oh, the toes are articulated too on the cat on the space brain. That's really nice. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15 points of articulation on this. It's a lot more than the four points of articulation on my Star Wars toys in the 80s. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, these are definitely gonna get destroyed by cash, uh, which is exactly the life that they would choose. Um, and uh, and I would recommend them as far as action figures go. They're pretty robust. They have comes with tons of accessories. The bases are pretty cool for getting them to stand up. Like It's literally just a peg on the foot. I think, I can't remember who innovated these. I had a bunch of action figures that came with these when I was a kid, but it allows you to have like one large point of articulation. So you can give them like a cool pose, but they have something to lean up on. So you can see they stand up really well with those. And even this guy, this is the only one I was like, I don't know how this is gonna stand up. But I think if you put the base on the forward leg for the jeans dealer, it'll probably be fine. Cause there's like a forward leg and a rear leg. So you put it on the forward leg and put it in the middle slightly. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought. So the rear leg kind of like, is, is just for like balance, but the four, the four leg will give him like the actual way to stand up. Cause his arms are all over the place, man. He's very small actually. If I look at him now next to the, cause he's like crouched over. You think of Gene Steelers as being significantly bigger. He's kind of a, he's kind of a little teen, little wee stealer, little teeny stealer. But they had to pick, fit him in the packaging. So it's funny cause I think Gene Steelers is able to like rip apart a Terminator, right? This guy's kind of, he's like Termagant sized. Um, yeah, there it is. Apart from that size, the few like mispainted, like not mispainted, but like parts where the paint job obviously just kind of ended um, for premium prices. The sculpting's great. Like the articulation's fantastic. The number of accessories they come with is fantastic. Um, for premium action figures, yeah, can't go wrong. Uh, there you go, McFarlane Toys, like ripping out some, some officially licensed Warhammer 40K merch. If you're looking to get something for your kids who are constantly trying to steal your miniatures, this is probably a good idea. And you can check out another review I'm gonna do of these guys, which are the Artist's Proofs. Unpainted versions you can paint yourself, um, fully articulated, same amount of gear that they come with. They're basically the same miniatures, but without a paint job. I'm gonna try and paint one, because why not? This is something I haven't done before. So there it is, another GMG review. Big thanks for um, McFarland Toys sending along these uh, these copies for me to review. And for you guys for watching, thanks, I'm Ash. Have a great week.